Hey everyone, my name is Shelby and today we're going to be painting this beautiful sunset and silhouette painting. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you need and then we'll get started. You're going to need a couple of brushes. You want to get this flat one, a smaller little flat one, and two detailing brushes. And then you are also gonna need a ruler, a pencil, and something to make a circle, that's gonna be for our moon, and some tape. And for our paint colors, we're gonna have a lot of white paint, a little bit of yellow, black paint, dark blue, and magenta. And with that, grab your canvas and let's get started. All right, before we even start with painting, we're gonna get our pencil and ruler ready and draw some lines. So the first line you're gonna make is all the way across the canvas. You're gonna go a little lower than halfway down your canvas and go ahead and use your ruler to make a nice straight line and that's the line where the sky meets the sea. Next, we're gonna be working on drawing out about where we want our mountains to be. So go ahead and make your loop. This is really primarily gonna take about half of the canvas. You wanna kinda start in the middle with your line, work your way down. Curve it up. And then above the line, you're gonna make your little hill and that will be your two mountains. For your final line, you're gonna go to the middle of your canvas, about half an inch below the line you made all the way across and draw a line until you meet that little curve for your mountain that you just made and that will be the line for your bungalows. The final pencil work we're gonna be doing is tracing a circle for our moon. I use the top of my water bottle cap. You can use whatever you would like to find a nice, good size circle about the size that you see me using here. After you've drawn your circle, go ahead and use tape to cover the surface of your moon because we are gonna be painting the background blue and you wanna keep your moon white. taped up our moon, we are going to be starting to paint our sky. So with the sky, we're going to start with our dark blue, slowly make it lighter blue, and then incorporate our magenta to have this nice effect of the blue transitioning into purple, and then a nice pink sky before you see the water. So you're going to go ahead and start with your dark blue and paint the top till about nearly the edge of the bottom of the moon. slowly incorporate your lighter blue and you do that by mixing your dark blue paint with your white paint on your plate and painting across the sky. So you're going to continue to paint the sky lighter and lighter blue until you're about one and a half to two inches to your line that you've drawn with your pencil. in and take your paintbrush and dip it in the magenta paint and start painting over some of your lighter blue paint to create that purple effect and slowly add more magenta until you're closer to your line and you have a lot more pink coming through. As you're working on the sky, a little tip, what's really nice about this painting is that there are so many elements of it that really come together in the end. If you are not happy with your gradient, what's also really nice about working with this acrylic paint is you can keep adding more paint, working with water until you're satisfied with how the sky is looking. So keep working on that, and once you're done with your sky and feel good about your combination of blues and pinks, we'll go on to the next section. For our next section, we're gonna be working on the ocean. 
go ahead and get back out your tape roll and go ahead and make a clear line slightly above the pencil line you've drawn. It's okay if you're covering a little bit of the pink. You really want to have a really clean dark blue line signifying the transition from the sky to the ocean. So once you've put your tape down, go ahead and take your dark blue paint and start painting the ocean. With this, kind of like the sky, we're going to be working with a lot of different shades of blue, but this time, instead of a gradient, we're going to be kind of layering it on top, and you're going to be going in with different shades of blue throughout the whole bottom of your ocean. The ocean is the time for you to have fun with going in with many different shades of blue. I like to start with my dark blue, and I make slightly lighter blues, and go over the top and do a lot of blending. And I do blending by adding more layers of paint and blending it in with a little bit of water. And so you can keep working on that different shades of blue until you feel really good about it. And then you're gonna go in with your paintbrush and pick up some white paint and do some white streaks in the water. And you can decide how much you wanna blend in your white. I like to blend mine in a lot and have a lot of different streaks of different blues coming through. But this section, you have a lot of freedom with. Alright, now we're going to go back to the sky and you're going to go ahead and take your brush and mix it in some magenta and white paint to make a beautiful pink and you're going to go ahead and paint over some of your lighter blue sky and that will make a beautiful purple color and as you get closer and closer to the ocean add more magenta in your sky so you really see the sky go from dark blue to lighter blue and a little bit of purple all the way to that beautiful pink sunset finish. So for the moon, what you're gonna do is go ahead and remove the tape on your moon and go ahead and clean it up with a little bit of blue. And then you're gonna go ahead and paint your whole moon white and you wanna have a nice clean shape. Next, what you're gonna do is go back and get your paintbrush and your dark blue paint and you're gonna make a bit of a squiggly backward C in the center of your moon with that dark blue. And you're going to go ahead and blend that out with a little bit of water and slowly adding more white to your paint as you go around the moon creating a kind of crescent shape. We want this moon to be very mystical as the sky's colors are changing, as the palm trees are blowing in the wind, this moon is meant to draw your attention to it. For our stars, we take the white paint we were just working with and do little dabs all around. You can do as many stars as you would like. I like to primarily keep my stars in the more blue section, but you're welcome to bring a couple down as well. Now we are going to be working on our mountains, so go ahead and get your paintbrush and your black paint ready, and we're going to go ahead and paint over those pencil lines that you've drawn, and you're going to fill it in. So go ahead and fill all of your mountain in with the black, as you're tracing around your pencil line, twist your wrist and make a jagged line. You don't want these mountains to be perfect. You want to have that rough edges that mountains and rocks do. Now for the bungalows, what you're going to do is paint over that initial line that we drew half an inch below our ocean line, which starts from the middle of our canvas all the way to the mountains. And then we're going to get ready to paint in our bungalows, which look like little houses. You're going to start with your rectangle on the bottom, outline it, and then outline your triangle on top, and then fill that in with black paint, and we're going to be drawing three of those. You're going to get your paintbrush a little more wet, and you're going to do these squiggles under the bungalows 
by flicking your wrist back and forth and slowly getting smaller, and that is also signifying a reflection of the bungalows in the water. Do three dots of yellow paint on each bungalow signifying windows and light coming through those windows. And then what you're gonna do, draw the three lines above the tornado you just painted in black, three longer lines of the yellow signifying the light reflecting in the water. Last but not least, we are going to be painting our beautiful palm trees. So we're going to start off by drawing the trunks of all of our palm trees to get a sense of where they are in space. So we're going to start with our big one in the front, and you're going to go ahead and start a little bit above your bungalow, start at a point and bring it all the way down to your front mountain. All the way down. You're going to do a second one a couple inches to the right of that. It is also going to be a big palm tree and you're going to bring it all the way down to the base of your mountain again. Next, we're going to look at our behind rock. You're going to paint a trunk slightly leaning to the right in the middle and you're going to paint a couple of smaller tree trunks that will go in the back. And now you know where all of our palm trees are going to go. For the leaves, what I like to do is start with our smaller palm trees to get a feel for the technique, and I like to do my two front big palm trees last. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna first bring your brush out to the different leaves that you know you're gonna make before you start doing your detailing. So kind of arm extensions from the trunk and then what you're gonna do is start from the center of your palm tree and flick your wrist out to make those smaller leaf details. And you're gonna do that for all your smaller palm trees. Once you do your smallest ones, then I like to work my way to the more medium sized one on the back rock. Again, so do the arms of your palm trees first and really focus on that flicking technique What's really important is you don't have too much paint on your paintbrush because you want to have those little light flicks at the end of palm trees reflected with your paint. And yeah, really focus on starting from the center of your palm tree and flicking outward so it slowly gets thinner on the ends. that thank you so much for painting with me we would love to see your beautiful works of art so if you could send a picture of you and your beautiful project to virtualbrunwoods at gmail.com we would love to see them